Welcome to the second Arena tutorial video. The goal of this video is to continue to introduce you to the Arena software product. In this video, I'll be covering the additional features offered by Arena Professional Edition. This discussion will be more valuable if you have previously seen the Arena Standard Edition video or already have a good working knowledge of Arena. Arena Professional Edition includes all the Arena Standard Edition capabilities. In addition, Professional Edition gives the modeler access to the Simon blocks and elements. The Simon constructs offer additional tools for the advanced modeler, or for users needing enhanced flexibility and scalability for dealing with complex systems. Along with the Simon constructs, the templates of packaging and flow allow users to more easily model high-speed manufacturing or continuous operations. Last, custom template creation lets an advanced user build custom templates for repeatedly performed operations, so less experienced users may model complex operations independently. First, let's revisit our model from the Standard Edition video. We've added some additional features to make it reflect our true system more closely. In our restaurant, customers tend to choose the shortest line when they enter the restaurant. To model this, we define each of the cashiers as a separate resource. We've also defined three separate queues for each of the cashiers. We've placed our cashiers into a resource set in the basic process panel, and our queues into a queue set using the advanced set data module. Now the customers will search for the shortest line and select that one. By using sets, we've been able to use the same logic for all three cashiers. We haven't had to separately define the logic for each cashier in queue. The simulation results show the customers are waiting on average eight to nine minutes, with some waiting in line for more than 40 minutes. In reality, we know that our customers will typically leave the line if they have not ordered after 10 minutes. Knowing that our customers won't truly wait this long, we'll change the logic so that customers still waiting after 10 minutes will leave. Right before customers enter the line, we created a duplicate entity to handle measuring the wait. Prior to creating the duplicate, we saved the identity value to an attribute, just like we did so we could reunite our customers with their orders. We also recorded which line the entity chose as the shortest. Our duplicate entity will wait exactly 10 minutes. We then want to use the duplicate to search the queue and see if the original entity is still waiting. So far, all the changes that we've made to the model can be done in standard edition. However, we now need to use the search block instead of the search module because there are three potential queues in which the original entity could be located and we want the searching entity to be able to specify which queue to search. Because search only looks at attribute values for entities in the queue being searched, we'll first write the identity number of the searching entity to a variable. Then we'll search the appropriate queue for the original entity that has a matching attribute value. We'll search the entire queue until we find that entity. If the original entity is still there, then the customer has been waiting longer than 10 minutes, and we need to remove them from that queue. We'll also want to count the number of our customers that are walking out because of the waits. If the searching entity cannot find the original, then we know the customer was able to place their order. In this case, we dispose of the duplicate. With our new logic in place, we can run the model and see that our average wait times have decreased. We can see that our logic is working since the longest any customer waits is 10 minutes. The record module tracked how many customers left due to the waits and showed us the results there. With a small number of queues, we could have used a decide module to determine which queue to search. However, you can imagine how this logic structure can quickly become unwieldy with a large number of queues and prone to user entry error. Using the search block makes the model more scalable by simplifying the process of adding a new cashier. If we decided to test adding a new cashier in queue, we could just create the new resource in queue and then add them to the existing sets. Our existing logic will work with the new cashier and not require any changes. As shown with our example using the search block, using the blocks can enhance the scalability and robustness of your model. Along with the blocks, Professional Edition gives you access to the Elements panel. The Elements panel gives you additional tools to deal with complexity in your model. If you wanted to assign specific cashiers to customers based on their needs, the Elements panel gives you access to control the assigned number values for resources in the software, thus allowing you to have more control over how resources are selected and used in your model. The Elements panel also allows the user to define variables, attributes, and expressions, which can make having multiple simultaneous contributors to a model easier to handle. If a separate person were working on a model of the kitchen, that model could be copied and pasted into the overall model after it is complete, instead of both users having to access the same file. It will be key for everyone working on the model to work together to define the handoffs in the model so that the different parts will work together correctly when they are brought together. This can be useful for extremely large models to reduce overhead. 
Suppose now we've decided to incorporate the idea of customers potentially leaving our restaurant in several different places in the model. If there's a section of logic that needs to be continuously reused or simplified so a less advanced modeler may take advantage of the concept, we can create a custom template to make it easier to use that particular piece of code in several places. Rather than constantly recreating this section of logic, we decide to bring these modules and blocks together under one new module that we'll develop. We can use our initial design as a shortcut for our new module, but we'll need to convert it to use the arena blocks instead of the higher level modules. We'll also want to define the attribute and variable in the module using the elements and create new names for each that will be exclusively used in our template. Now we're ready to create a new template. Just like with creating a new model, we click on the new button. Instead of selecting model window, we'll select template window. Next, we add a name for our new template. After we've entered our name, we'll go to the logic window view where we can paste in our existing blocks. We have a few blocks that are relying on previously selected sets and maximum wait times, so we'll need to give the user the ability to select these at the module level instead of using the previously entered parameter. We'll go to the dialog design window to add in these options. There are three inputs we need for the user, the queue set, the attributes storing the selected queue, and the maximum wait time. We'll start by bringing in a combo box control for the queue set. Once we've brought that in, we can set the name of the operand that we'll use to reference this value in the rest of the custom module. We can add a more user-friendly option to the text input if we want to add, use a shortened version for the operand name. After we've defined all the operand names, we can then use those in our blocks to replace the values previously used. Every place we reference the sets, we'll replace with a set operand name and the selected queue. We'll replace the maximum time with that operand as well. Once we've defined our inputs, we need to tell the custom module what our entry and exit points will be. We'll bring in hidden operands for these three points. Under logic properties, we'll change the type from basic to either entry point or exit point. We'll have one entry point and two exit points, one for customers as they initially join the line and another for customers who leave the line after waiting the maximum wait time. Once our hidden operands are defined, we need to go assign these points to the blocks in our module. To assign the entry point, we'll use its operand name as the value for the assigned block where all entities will start in our module. If needed, we can go to the user view window to modify the appearance of our final module, as well as the layout of the entry and exit points. Once we've assigned the entry and exit points to all the necessary blocks and designed the module's final appearance, our custom module is ready to go. After we finish designing the module, we can check and then generate our new template. Once the template has been generated, we can bring that into our existing model and use it to replace all the existing blocks. We'll use the drop-downs in the entry field to select the correct queue sets and other inputs. Now we have our custom module that we can use in any situation where we need to have our customers leave after waiting too long. Along with the custom template creation in the blocks and elements panels, Professional Edition gives the user access to the flow processing and packaging modules. The flow processing modules simplify modeling continuous processes, while the packaging enable easier representation of high-speed manufacturing lines. Arena products are available for purchase or lease. For more information about obtaining Arena software, contact Arena Sales at arena-info at ra.rockwell.com. For international sales, please go to www.arenasimulation.com. Click on Contact Us to find a link for the listing of Arena Partners so you may find the right representative for your country. Thank you for your time.